All right, I guess we're on. Okay, a couple things we got to add to the EM Spectrum uh, lecture. So open up your notebooks to the EM Spectrum. Most of the material we've already covered, but there's a couple other things I want to add to that. And one, what is it called when you have a packet of energy? What term is that? Ladies and gentlemen, open up to the EM Spectrum notes. Yes, a photon. For all you Star Trek fans, you know, they talk about photon torpedoes. And that is really, it is a packet of energy. And we'll suffice it, we'll leave it at that. When you get into chemistry and you get into physics, you'll get a little bit more detailed uh, term there. But an EM wave an EM wave has wave and particle characteristics. It can act as a wave, it can also act as a particle. What we got? Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, just that right there. Thank you. So when you talk about an EM wave, electromagnetic wave, it has what's called a duality. You can have particles and you can have waves. Yes. I went through that right at the beginning. I know. It pays to pay attention. But when you get into physics, you'll get into it a little bit more. So we're going to leave it at that particular spot. An EM wave has an electric component to it, and it also has a magnetic component to it. Hence the term electromagnetic wave. It has, this should already be in your notes, it has an electric and magnetic component to it. Now, both of those, and they're called fields, both of those are perpendicular to each other. So the electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other. So those two things are perpendicular. Now we know an electromagnetic wave is of what general type? A transverse. And in a transverse wave, what's the motion? Perpendicular to the direction of motion. So what that is saying, the electric field and the magnetic field and the direction of motion are all perpendicular to each other. Electric field, magnetic field, direction of motion. Perpendicular to each other. Somebody give me a three-dimensional model. Go ahead. You're up first. Go. Go this way. I don't know. That? Uh, is that correct? Does everybody agree or disagree? No. Well, you got to think about it. This one's perpendicular to this, right? Yeah. Is this perpendicular to that and this? No. Wait, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. In fact, if we just dropped, here, let me do this for you. Very good. All three are perpendicular to each other. It's a three-dimensional model. So as an electromagnetic wave travels wherever, it moves in any direction, and all three are perpendicular to each other. Not, whoops, excuse me, not bad.
Good catch. I think everything else on there we've talked about before. As wavelength decreases, frequency and therefore energy increases. As wavelength increases, frequency and therefore energy decreases. All right. Anything else to add off that one? Yes. Anything else? Yeah. Time is uh, money. Money is time. Go. Anything else to add? Okay. Uh, open up to Doppler effect. And I think I'm just going to put this here. Open up to Doppler effect. See if it'll follow me. Open your notes up to the Doppler effect. Put it right there. This should be in your notes already. It's the apparent change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. It's the apparent change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. Okay, so hopefully that is in your notes, which it should be already. Now the Doppler effect. Let's see if I can get this to go some more. The Doppler effect holds true for sound and light. The Doppler effect holds true for sound and light. We're going to do a little bit more with light when we get to our next unit which is going to be cosmology astronomy. But when you think of the uh, Doppler effect, let's say we've got a, uh, a race car there. And let's just say it's, its engine is revving. And as the engine revs, what's happening? Not yet, because there's no what? There's no what? 
There's no what? Oh no, I said the engine's the engine's running, but there's no what? Because there's no what? Because there's no motion. Remember, part of it is the motion either of the person listening or of the object itself. Whoops. It's a fire alarm buzzer. It's a piezo buzzer. As it approaches you, what can you tell me about the pitch? Not. The pitch gets higher, so therefore frequency. And as it goes by you, the pitch goes lower, so therefore the fr frequency goes down. And if frequency goes down, what happens to wavelength? It goes up. So when you have the Doppler effect, and again, it can hold true for light also. And we're going to do the, uh, we'll do the light in the next unit. So when it is not moving, you have the same frequency generated in all directions. Therefore, the wavelength stays what? The same. Now, once the car starts moving, we can get rid of this. What is the car doing to its own sound wave? Oh, they're catching up to it. So as the car is traveling, when you guys are done, let me know and I can continue. As the car is moving, it's actually catching up to its own sound wave. So in front of the vehicle, the NASCAR, if you will, what's happening to the wavelength? Apparently, it's shorter, so frequency will go up. Behind the car, it's really running away from its own wavelength. So the frequency goes, and therefore wavelength gets bigger. So really, it depends on where you're standing. If you are in front of the object as it is traveling, you're going to hear a higher pitch. If it passes you and you're behind it, you're going to hear a lower pitch. Now, the same thing can hold true if this is standing still and you're moving at a rapid speed towards it or away from it. Again, it's the apparent change in frequency due to a change in motion of the observer or the object. Now one interesting thing to note what happens in that situation? And what do we call that? That's going to be a what? That's a sonic boom. And if you are one time the speed of sound, it's referred to as what? Mach 1. If you are two times the speed of sound, you're Mach 2. Notice I did not give the speed of sound a specific what? Number. Why? Is it determined by what? Place. No. Energy. Speed of sound is determined by what? Remember, sound needs a medium to go through. Vacuum. Well, that, and for air, it's determined by what? Temperature. The speed of sound through the atmosphere is determined by temperature. That's why when they have these jet fighters, they'll just say Mach 1. They won't give you a specific uh, meters per second or miles per hour because the sound barrier can be broken at different temperatures, and that's going to change the speed of sound a little bit. 
Well, the greater the temperature, the greater kinetic energy of the what? Of the molecule, so they're already moving faster. So that's what ends up happening with that. Uh, let's see, one other thing. Anybody been down the Gulf Coast at all? Panhandle, Florida, Alabama, down there. Uh, not, you don't find it too much in the Bahamas. But down in the Gulf Coast, you have a lot of naval air stations and you have a lot of Air Force bases. And it's kind of cool to watch these jet fighters take off over the beach. And then when they hit their afterburners, you can hear the sonic booms over the ocean. You just hear boom, boom. Yeah, and it's really, it's really kind of neat to listen to them. Anything else to add off that one? I think that covered about everything. We're going to, the same thing holds true for light. What's the short frequency side of light? Short frequency or low frequency side is red, yeah. The high frequency side would be purple or the bluish side, violet, yeah. And we're going to cut that and get into the red shift with astronomy. Anything else to add off that? All right, so hopefully you had all that down already so you guys can uh, get out and start working on.